Hi, I'm Kelly Holmes, I'm the National School Sport Champion. In this programme you'll see how schools can set out to raise standards right across the board. The techniques used to improve performance in physical education can be the key to improvement throughout the school. The Haysbrook School is an all-boys school in Tunbridge in Kent. Although Kent is an otherwise selective area, Haysbrook has a non-selective intake. In 1996, the school's 5 plus A star to C GCSE rate was 20%. But in recent years, it has more than doubled that percentage. Director of Specialism and Deputy Head Teacher David Rowe knows what engages many of his students. If you look at the playground, boys love playing sport. They love actually playing football, love playing basketball. And from that, obviously, the idea of trying to instill some sort of sports ideas within their learning in other areas of the curriculum is something that we wanted to do. They don't do it all of the time. They do it at certain times of the year when it's relevant. And we think that's really important, that it's got to be relevant to what the boys are actually doing in their lessons. Um, it's not just something that's added on for the sake of adding it on. Typical of the way Haysbrook weaves sport into the curriculum is his citizenship class. Today, teacher Katie Goldfinch is leading a lesson about the life of refugees in the Sudan. The title of today is Sport More Important Than Food and the aim of today's lesson is to describe how sport can help children in refugee camps, okay? So is sport more important than food? Yes. Is anybody Yes, Lewis? I'll say yes because in an LED sim like that, yep. it will be more enjoyable to have something like sport to pass the time and take your mind off actually being a refugee. Okay, my conclusion was that no, perhaps sport isn't more important than food. We all need food to survive. However, sport can build confidence and it can build pride, which food can't. And confidence and pride are something that every child should have the right to. Raising confidence and pride in children closer to home, the Haysbrook School is piloting a new scheme devised by school sport coordinator Pete Turner. Our first game is going to be a teamwork game, okay? And we've got to help each other place Bob the Prick Stick as far over our green line as we possibly can. So you've got a Bob, we've got a Bob, Josh has got his stickers and we're going to see what happens. Caged Green Primary is a special school for autistic children. Pete has brought along with him a small group of Haysbrook students to help out. Quite often the students that maybe will become disaffected with their cur normal curriculum in school are actually very keen on sport in one way or another. About 10 children uh, are working on a programme where they actually go out and work with children from um, special schools in the local area. So far that is proving very successful. Those boys really feel as if they're valued for something now. You're going to get a sticker for every time when you're holding on to your rounders bat, somebody walks over the top. You're going to get a sticker for every time you help somebody out with that, OK? We've just been working with some autistic people like play sports with them and help them. I was really excited about doing it because it's a new experience and it's like we're meant to be doing it so it helps us do better in school. These pupils who at times can be very challenging in their own lessons all of a sudden became superstars when, they're, when they were helping out other pupils so uh, we kept it going and so far it seems to be working quite well. Help out. That's it. Okay, I like doing it, it's like good to help them, it feels good that I'm helping them as well as I hope that they're enjoying it as well. Because yeah, I behave more in lessons as well now that I didn't used to really do and it's helped me just be a better student in school. Results to date from the Cage Green initiative have been so encouraging that the scheme seems likely to continue and leadership is now being used as an inspirational tool in other areas. This is all part of Haysbrook's strategy of working with partner schools. 
What we've managed to do now is we've managed to develop that leadership role, not only within PE and sport, but in other subject areas as well. So we've got uh, leaders in ICT, for instance, who go out to primary schools and help teach primary school children how to use computers and ICT within their lessons. Back in the classroom, teacher Sarah Chapman is giving a maths lesson. On the face of it, maths isn't a subject that is closely related to sport. But Sarah has found interesting ways to engage students by introducing sporting themes. In the summer, I'll take pupils out onto the school field and we'll actually do things like use Pythagoras' theorem to set out cricket wickets. We've set out the basketball courts on the playground and they went out, they did all the measurements. We used some of the mathematics skills that they developed in the classroom. And that actually gets the, the more vocational pupils um, an idea of how maths can be used in a completely different environment, which is quite important to them as well, I think. Today, it's a lesson on statistics. The task in hand is to analyse decathlon results in order to determine which are the most difficult events. And I think it's very clear there that it's the javelin. For those two guys, yeah. they've worked on the javelin and that is why they've won the medals, because they are better at the javelin than everyone else. So I think, you know, there's been quite a lot of, there is quite a lot of analysis that goes into um, sporting events. There's an awful lot of statisticians that work with top athletes and actually look at the data and look at areas where they can improve. As a school working with young boys, um, we are aware of their, t their learning style. A lot of our children are either visual learners or uh, kinesthetic learners. In physical education, obviously, it is a kinesthetic activity. They like to be doing things, and again, a lot of our boys like to learn by being active. So it's the ideal situation. Typical of the visual approach to learning is the way video analysis is used to improve basketball skills. We're using a motion analysis software to help the boys evaluate and improve their, own, their performance. And not just the performance of others, but their own performance. So again, we're developing their independent skills and, and this independent learning side. Okay, over you go, Joe, over you go. The, the camera will, will take the footage live in the room. The laptop then delays the footage by six to eight seconds in this case. They can then do their shot, move to the side and, and evaluate what they've done straight away. So the laptop effectively delays live time in the room. Watch, John. OK, now you can answer your questions because you've seen it. OK, get a sheet. Really, they look to identify faults and weaknesses or improvements they could make uh, through using the, the, the software. They'll then go away and practice those and then come back, hopefully, with an increased knowledge and understanding of, of the technique that they're doing. To make it a massive impact, really, in terms of things like focus and behaviour, maintaining that on-task behaviour as long as we can through the lesson, uh, but also increased mastery and, and, and understanding, really, of techniques and ideas within PE. Oh, okay, yeah. Excellent work. Very, very pleased with the fact that we can execute the process of evaluation. Now, would you agree that through the use of the video at the start and the, the fact that you've been able to watch yourself straight away, immediately after you've done it. Do you think that's, that's improved the speed at which you've learned? Yeah, okay, and it's improved some of the things that you've picked up as well. At Coesley School near Dudley in the West Midlands, video technology has been integrated into the curriculum to such an extent that staff and students now contribute to their own TV channel. The Coesley School is a comprehensive and specialist sports college with 950 students on roll. The innovative use of ICT and PE teaching has brought about positive changes to the ethos throughout the whole school. And it's at break and lunch times that the driving force for change becomes obvious. Cosley TV. I think it's had an impact because not only can we see our achievements, but other people can see, because sometimes people aren't aware of what other people have achieved in the school, but now everyone can see. From the early days, the school's cameras were used to film sports days, matches, performances and other special events. Now, every break and lunchtime, Coesley TV plays on screens throughout the school. This exposure has enhanced students' confidence and self-esteem. 
a benefit which has been extended to other areas of the curriculum. And the TV channel has demonstrated its ability to change lives. By the time he was in year nine, Craig was on the verge of permanent exclusion. He had little interest in school, apart from dance classes. His GCSE dance performance piece was the highlight of the school's dance festival and became a big hit when it was shown on Cosley TV. When I was in school, they introduced the TVs on the, the wall and started to put most of the lads' stuff on there and, the, and seeing yourself on there, which made yourself feel a bit proud. It's definitely um, raised self-esteem in the students uh, and it's definitely built confidence. It's also given students a greater opportunity to evaluate their work. The exposure on Cosley TV helped to change boys' negative attitudes towards dance and encourage Craig to rethink his career plans. A few of the lads was like realised then that it wasn't just all leotards and things like that. So they sort of asked me, can you show me, can you teach me? And I sort of says, yeah. Now age 17 and studying at college, Craig volunteers at the school two days a week, running the boys' dance club. I think it's just great that kids can see what other kids have done and then get themselves involved because some may like not be near on the day that it was talked about and then others will say, oh wow, where's that come from on the TV and then they'll find out and then it comes back to you. So basically it gets everybody involved, everybody, gets everybody talking. Craig's positive experience has been replicated in many other areas of school life. Lunchtime behaviour has improved because students are engaged by the TV channel and participation in extracurricular sport has increased. The school's investment became even more worthwhile when staff outside the PE and dance departments spotted the potential for extending the use of the technology. Cosley TV has been used as a showcase for a variety of extracurricular activities, such as the Duke of Edinburgh's award expeditions and their video equipment has been crucial to the school's animation club. A lot of the equipment, the computers in this room, um, the lighting rigs, the cameras, have all been paid for out of Sports College money and we've been fortunate enough through cross-curricular links to uh, use that equipment and to have after-school clubs. One of the club's biggest hits was based on interviews with teachers about their attitudes to Christmas. I'm still a child. <laughs> My mum still just does me a stocking. I think Christmas has become a lot more commercialised now. It seems to start a lot earlier. I think the one thing that really makes me feel quite good about watching um, the Cozy TV is looking at the students and their changes of facial expression when they see themselves on TV. It really is quite inspiring for them and you can see their confidence and self-esteem raised just by watching themselves on the TV channel. At Haysbrook and Cosley, physical education and sport have had a profound effect. They have helped students to achieve in curriculum subjects way beyond physical education. They have raised pride and achievement not only in school, but also within the local community. And particularly through leadership schemes, sport has helped to re-engage disaffected students. At the end of the day, Deputy Head Teacher David Rowe is in no doubt about sport's whole school effect. You know, sport plays its part. It's not the answer to everything, but it plays. It is one of the one of the pieces of the jigsaw that we use to to inspire children and make them interested in school.